right, everybody. Hello and welcome back to In The Mixer. As always, I am Sean. Really excited to get back involved in another episode of our Football's Coming Home series today. But it is the Christmas episode, if you can see this date up here in the top corner, which means... Oh, now it feels a bit more like Christmas. I look good. I feel good. So listen, I bought this suit. I need to get value for money out of it, which means I'm going to use it at every opportunity. It is amazing. You can get your own at fruitysuits.com. There will be a link in the description below. But let's carry on with this episode and see how we've gone over our last couple of games. Um, in the last episode, for those that watched it, we played Chelsea and lost 2-1. Two misses of the seasons. The first was Pedro's in the first half, hitting both posts and then somehow poking it wide. Uh, and then Dan Gosling had an opportunity to equalise for us in extra time and he put it straight at the keeper from about four yards out, which was horrific, but fair play to Chelsea. They're a very good team in this game and I don't think we handled them particularly well throughout the course of the 90 minutes, so fair result. And then we beat Swansea, who at the time were on the top bottom of the table, and then, but they have improved a little bit in the game since. And then we played Watford, a 3-2 victory. Ashley Barnes and Callum Wilson up top have been phenomenal over the last month and a bit. Um, they were our two highest match rated players. We do have a couple of concerns with our fullback areas and it may be something that we look to improve a little bit in January. Andre Carrillo in the sixth minute, Troy Deeney with a penalty in the 29th, but the game was decided in the 37th minute. No further goals came, nothing really of note, but still an exciting contest just the same. Then we had a 1-0 win over West Ham. Steve Cook caught, uh, scored from a corner. Cook and Gibson have been pretty solid in the midfield, just the fullbacks that have been struggling of late. Gave a couple of people opportunities off the bench to impress without really doing so so we do have some further depth that I think we can add in January as well and then a 3-3 draw with Crystal Palace we were properly FM'd in this one Ashley Barnes scored a hat-trick inside 38 minutes to put us 3-0 up at half time I said assertively happy with the way things are going and then in the second half uh, through a penalty Andrews Townsend and then Connor Wickham breaking our hearts in extra time uh, managed to find an equaliser for a 3-3 draw so a little bit disappointing there but not horrible form. We've only lost one of our last eight, so it's not panic stations just yet. But we are playing Man City, who, as you know, in real life, were the champions this season just gone and have an absolutely phenomenal squad. They've made a couple of additions in this game already as well. They've brought in Jose Gaia from Valencia um, and then ex-Liverpool winger Iago Aspas has come across from Celta Vigo, I want to say. And I don't know what it is. I've, I've played a couple of different seasons throughout England. They always seem to bring him in, if not in the first window, in the second one, definitely. But just some of the depth that they've got throughout the course of the squad is it's frightening. So that'll be a tough test for us today. And then in the other game, we also have Burnley. If you have been watching all the way through the season, thank you very much. But you will remember from the very first episode, 6-1 at Dean Court in their only our second game of the season. Chris Wood with four goals. Sam Vokes with a double of his own. And Robbie Brady playing on the left wing absolutely tore us apart. So a really good opportunity for us to try and get some sort of result back. I don't think we're going to go out and beat them 6-2. But hey, if we can at least go to Turf Moor, get some points. We save a little bit of face. And when I see Sean Dyche at after party, and things like that and he, he won't treat me like I'm his bitch. Now also, it being Christmas, I have bought myself a little something, wrapped it and put it under the tree. Ryan Sessegnon, if you've been watching from the start, I've been bitching and moaning that I've wanted a left-footed player on the left-hand side just to give us a bit of balance. Um, obviously, he is a phenomenal talent, won the Championship Player of the Year last year in his first season in the Premier League with Fulham now as an 18-year-old. We're paying $5 million up front and then $25 million across three further payment payments over the next 12 months. And they also get 50% of any future transfer fees we might get for him. So they, they're getting a good return for him. We are breaking the club record. We are breaking the club record transfer to sign him, but he's already operating at a really high level. He's got some phenomenal stats, even playing him here on the left wing. For a little while, I was thinking maybe we play him at fullback as well. He's just a great signing to have. And at 17 years old, we can get a good five years out of him. And then sell him on for a real, relatively high fee and get return on our investment. Even though the series might only go for two or three seasons, I do like to think that somewhere in a parallel universe, there's a manager that takes over at Bournemouth and he's got a phenomenal squad that he gets to work with uh, over that four or five years. So really excited about that transfer and we do still have enough in our budget that we can bring in a couple of other players as well throughout January. But enough talking for me, let's jump straight into the game here. We'll go through the team. Jack Butland, of course, in goal. He's been phenomenal throughout this season. His 6.83 average rating, I think, is slightly unfair. He's been critical in a lot of the games that we've played. I've gone with Mings and Smith as the two fullbacks. I haven't been super happy with Charlie Daniels' form of late. And Simon Francis, while a very good player, he consistently, when we play against pacey wingers, of which Raheem Sterling is going to be one, uh, leaves space in behind. And we saw... 
And we've seen in a lot of games that that has been a bit of a liability for us. Gibson and Cook will continue uh, as a central defensive partnership. I do want to try and bring in one more central defender. Francis can play there, but we're kind of lacking another option just to you know keep both of them on their toes. They haven't done anything wrong, but I think we do need to improve our depth there. Um, I'm going to go with Scott McTominay as a box-to-box -box midfielder. This might actually be the last chance for him. Um, his best performances came when we had a horrible injury run and he was playing as an advanced forward. He hasn't really brought that much to the central midf centre of midfield uh, in the opportunities he's been given there. Sermon will play alongside him. Ivan Grealish on the wings as our creative forces. And, of course, the first names we probably put on the team sheet, Ashley Barnes and Callum Wilson working together up top. So it's a decent side. We are going to stick on attacking because we're playing at home. I would like to see us try and take it to Manchester City, but very wary of some of the talent they have across the pitch. If it's not working out, they will tear us apart. So we need a decent performance. All right, looking at their team here, they've got Mendy and Walker as the fullbacks. Walker's hiding behind my head. Edison in goal. Otto Mendy and Stones as a central defensive partnership. Fernandito will play as the halfback. Silva and De Bruyne in midfield is a phenomenal pairing. Sterling on the left wing, Aspas the new signing on the right, and Aguero up top. The quality that they have on their bench is phenomenal. They're players that I'd absolutely kill for. Claudio Bravo, Laporte, company, Gabriel Jesus, who is amazing in this game. Very quickly, Fabian Delph, who I might just sneakily add to the shortlist. Danilo, Bernardo Silva, just all any of those players could come on and could come into our club and be a star. And they are riding the pine at the city ground. Um, I'm just going to say assertively, I'm just going to say calmly, we're huge underdogs and that suits us down to the ground. Let's go out and cause an upset and then I'm going to assertively tell our defence. I think there's a lot more to come and at least Jack Butlin's responded well. If we can get a decent game out of them, uh, then we're in good stead. But here we go, Man City at home. Wilson's coming forward with the ball now. I think this is just going to be the start highlight, but we are retaining possession well, which is good to see. But it's not so much about possession we have because they are so clinical on the counter-attack uh, or building up from the back or whatever it happens to be. I have a nasty run with Sergio Aguero and conceding a whole bunch of goals to him. So, fingers crossed. Oh, David Silva's gotten injured and Fabian Delph actually comes off the bench. So, never happy to see a player get injured. But it does do us a massive favour. <laughs> We've gotten outside the first 15 minutes. One of the things that we've changed in our tactic and in our structure is being a bit more aggressive. They do have the ball now, though. Why do I jinx these things? Smith puts the ball forward. McTominay goes up and doesn't get there. Gibson with the ball now to McTominay again. Forward to Barnes. He finds Wilson early. Can he feed Grealish in here? No, he's lost the ball to Fernandinho, and the counter might be on. Aspas comes forward, but it's Sermon with a good tackle. Grealish looks for Wilson down the line. He's got Barnes in the middle if he can find him. He puts it towards it, and I think Barnes got the header, and it hit, clips the crossbar as it goes over. So good to see that we've gotten a highlight in. Good to see we've had a couple of shots here. They're just shading possession, but you'd kind of expect that with a three in midfield against our two. Central midfield, obviously. De Bruyne now finds Fernandinho at the base. Just let Fernandinho have it. Cook with a good ball. Finds Butlin. Butlin pushes it forward to Barnes. He's. Oh, I thought he'd lost the ball. I thought he'd been fouled then, but no. Sterling comes through. Cook with an excellent tackle. Mendy on the overlap. Hangs it up back post. And Iago Aspas pokes home. That is frustrating because I thought for the first 20 minutes we were just shading the majority of it. But that's the danger. They've got quality all over the pitch. Guerra comes forward here. You see him slide that ball in Sterling. It's a great tackle from Cook. Mendy just hangs a ball up. And I think it is Tyrone Mings on that far side. Just lets Iago Aspas get goal side of him, and unfortunately that's more than enough for them to go a goal up in the first half. So David Silva, don't matter. They're still going to turn around and hurt us a little bit. 25 minutes gone now. We aren't doing horribly. Jordan Ives seems to be struggling. Scott McTominay seems to be struggling a little bit, but we'll at least give them you know, an hour in this game to try and get some improvement out of him. As far as the league table goes, even a loss here today won't see us drop that far as long as Crystal Palace don't start destroying Manchester United. We should be all right in sixth position, which is a phenomenal return on where we started the season. Okay, and 38 gone, and Steve Cook's going to mop up here, but he hasn't got a lot on in front of him. He goes for a long ball up the line. Jordan's caught the ball. Barnes on halfway, goes back to Sermon. Smith to Jordan. Sermon again. At least we're retaining possession and not panicking by forcing a ball in behind. But Delph has tidied up at the base of midfield. Fernandinho now with the ball direct to Aguero. He's coming forward. It's a good tackle from Cook. But these secondary runners are killing us. And thankfully, Aspas screws his shot just wide. Oh, 
they are a very good team. It looks relatively easy when you even when you look at the stat line, but then uh, I think the highlights that we've seen, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm just panicking a little bit, but it feels like every time they're coming forward, they are going to score in some way. Two minutes to be added on. Gives me an opportunity to go in at halftime, have a bit of a team talk. We're doing a decent job on Raheem Sterling, which is good for Adam Smith. Assertively. Unlucky. And everyone seems relaxed and gaining in confidence. And then I'm going to say to our attack, I think there's a lot more to come from you. And look, they don't seem to have noticed anything too bad. So going to keep an eye on Jordan Ibe, Scott McTominay, and Ashley Barnes, who seem to be the big strugglers at the moment. Gibson hasn't had a great game, but that might just be because of his a part he might have played in the goal. I'm not sure. Fernandinho now kicks off the second half. We've got 45 minutes to try and find an equaliser here. I would take a 1-1 draw if we can make that happen. I'm going to give it another 10 minutes before I look at any substitutes here. We do have Gosling on the bench. I'm not punishing for them, him for that miss against Chelsea, but uh, I'm not exactly thrilled with him, and I can't wait for Lewis Cook to be fit again. Aspas with a free kick, and that one is blazed over. It was pretty much straight down the middle. There's a lot of straight down the middle free kicks that go in, actually, now that I think about it. All right, we're getting towards the hour now, mark now, and because it's Man City, I'm actually going to pause the game. We'll jump into our tactic screen here. Scott McTominay can come off. We'll bring on Gosling as that box-to-box -box player. Jordan Ibe isn't having the greatest game, but he's probably amongst our better players, so I'm not sure what I should do. Um, Gibson's not playing that well, so we'll bring on... Simon Francis, just to steady the ship a little bit, and I'll hold off on the last one. I'll give Ibe and Barnes a little bit more time and then probably take one of them off for the last 10, 15. I think there's a lot more to come from you. Dan Gosling's responded well. Simon Francis doesn't give a shit. And away we go here. Oh, I've forgotten to press play. I probably could have sat here for half an hour commentating nothing uh, without realising that I hadn't restarted the game. But away we go. Subs have come on now. Immediate highlight. Is this going to help us or hinder us? Delph with the ball forward to Aguero. He's in a weird spot, and Butland comes out well and pushes that one around the post, thankfully. Corner now, De Bruyne to take. Cook heads it away. I still don't have any, like, I haven't changed the default structures for his offside, thankfully. Aspas has put that one in from the corner, but he is off. Thanks, fuck, for that. I thought for a second. It just went that half second longer than that animation usually does, and I thought maybe, maybe they're going to do something. Aspas is coming forward now. For all his faults at Liverpool, he's having a cracking game against us today. Sterling's in behind, and Butland comes out very strongly and keeps that one from getting back across goal or even into it directly. And he's come out and scooped up that corner after Aspas met it from De Bruyne. An hour gone now. It looks like Edison in their goal has picked up a knock. I'm not sure where that would have come from. Ashley Barnes isn't having a great game, looking frustrated. Jordan Ives improved a little bit, so we might make that change here as well. I'm going to put Wilson back to be the defensive forward and bring on Jermaine Defoe and see if he can. An experienced 35-year-old advanced forward slash sort of poacher, can he be the person to make the difference for us here? A lot more to come from here. He doesn't care. He's been everywhere in the game. Why would he respect me? I'm a Sunday League footballer. Eight shots to us, 10 to City. They are also shading possession. Uh, they've had the majority of the highlights, even for shots that they've missed. So we have removed the players that weren't performing that well. 6.4, 6.4, 6.0. Well, I should just say 6 because that's what it is. Uh, and their best players at the moment look to be Mendy, Delph, who's actually come off the bench. Maybe we would have been better off if uh, David Silva had stayed on for the entire game. I'm going to use a shout here. I'm going to tell everybody to push forward a little bit and immediately we get a highlight. Is this going to go well for us or is it going to be more Man City possession? Ball in behind, a great tackle. Mings goes back to Butland. Butland launches it forward towards Wilson. Oh, I thought Defoe was going to get on that, but De Neo cuts it out well. He's now entered the fray for Kyle Walker, it looks like. Mendy might have hurt himself there, but we're going to play on. Gosling, can he... Oh, Gosling. What a fantastic flick on header there. I think it was from Jermaine Defoe. And Dan Gosling, riding the wrongs of the previous episode and that horrendous miss against Chelsea, has come off the bench to find that equaliser for us. Not 100% sure it's deserved. Callum Wilson, he clearly not a gentleman of football. Defoe flicks it on here. And you think Edison could maybe come out and get it, but he's got a knock as well himself. And Gosling passes that one in from inside the six-yard box. So we have fought back a little bit. Mendy has picked up a knock, but he has got enough in him to see out the game. Five minutes remaining, 10 shots apiece. We, they've shaded possession. We're on the push forward instruction now. 
Aspas is coming forward, finds Aguero. Their pace on the counter is horrifying, and thankfully, rather than crossing where Raheem Sterling was lurking at back post, Aguero screws his shot to the right. All right, last couple of minutes now. How much extra time? Five minutes of extra time. I guess that has to do with each of the injuries that we've seen. Otamendi's on a yellow card now as well. What can we do? Is there going to be any more drama in this particular match? We're in the last 90 seconds now, and I dare say the next highlight will be the last one, if there's going to be a highlight at all, because we've gone beyond the planned extra time. Mings with a throw-in, plays it up the line to Defoe, company cleans it up. Danio puts the ball forward, Cook intercepts, finds Francis, who switches out to Jordan. Do we have enough time here to launch one more attack? And no, even the ball forward, no time there. The referee's called full time, and it's a 1-1 draw. I did say at half time I'd take 1-1 if we made it to the end of the game, so I'm not going to get too upset with anybody. Jump in the dressing room here and say calmly, what a comeback, a great effort, just trying to boost morale. Bournemouth Rescue, late draw, a 1-1 match at Dean Court against Manchester City, who are a phenomenal side. They probably had the better of it in terms of the highlights, uh, as well as you can see here, more shots, more possession. Um, Steve Cook, player of the match with an 8.3, and I thought he was excellent. Not going to talk too much. Let's just jump straight ahead to the Burnley game, and we will go through the team for that one. All right, so Bournemouth, last game of the day today. I did give everyone the day off for Christmas because I've got a heart. I'm not going to be a Grinch about it. We have dropped into eighth spot. Leicester and Crystal Palace have gone above us, but a victory here today will put us right back up to sixth spot. And if we can do it with nine, and if we can score seven goals, uh, we'll draw level with Tottenham on goal difference. So that's really the spot I'm going to start aiming for now. That's sixth spot. I'm happy to be behind United, Arsenal, Chelsea, City, and Tottenham. Looks like Liverpool are the team that have drawn the short straw this year and are the one that has a rough year. Sometimes it's Arsenal, sometimes it's Tottenham. It's very rarely City or United for whatever reason. Going to rotate the team just a little bit as well, just with the fixture congestion we've had. So Butland always will play in goal. Gibson and Cook is our central defensive partnership. Mings will continue on the left-hand side. I've actually been relatively happy with his form. Uh, and if we go into this screen view, you can see here his form over the last five games has been slowly improving with each performance. So we'll give him another platform to go again. Ibe on the right wing didn't have a great top game last time out, but it has been so important for us. I'm going to bring in Mark Pugh for... Jack Grealish, who's just kind of plateaued a little bit, around 6.8, so not horrible ratings, but just to kind of give him a kick up the arse. And hopefully Pew, looking to get revenge. He did play in that first game against Burnley as well. Sermon and Gosling will play in midfield. Gosling, after getting that late equaliser, deserves a start. And I don't think Scott McTominay is really cut out for Premier League football week in, week out. We do only have him on loan as well, so we should probably look to try and integrate some of our own players. That we pick up in January rather than both he and Keenan Davis. And the other one, which I'm not 100% sold on myself, is uh, Jermaine Defoe coming on for Callum Wilson. Just about rotation, Callum Wilson obviously has a long injury history. I don't want to force him too much, uh, and I'm kind of having an eye on the Man United game on the 30th of December, which is our next match, which will be played off screen. Okay, they've got a pretty solid looking lineup here. It's very different to the first team that we played. No Sam Vokes at all in the squad. No Robbie Brady on the left-hand side who tore us apart. Arfield comes back in. Um, they've also got Nick Pope on the bench who we tried to pick up during the off-season. We did bid on Tom Heaton as well. Ben Mee was phenomenal in that first game. He's been replaced with, uh, what's this guy's name? Tim Ream. That it looks like they've picked up from Fulham. Ex-Leeds United, Charlie Taylor. Kevin Long on the right. James Tarkowski in the middle. Hendrick and Cork is their central midfield partnership. Another ex-lead man in Chris Wood and Narky Wells, who it looks like they've picked up from Huddersfield throughout the course of this season, will part be the partnership up top. So a good side, still some good English talent within that group and on that bench. And I'm going to passionately say we owe Burnley after what happened in our last match. Go out and get revenge. Pretty decent comeback to get a 1-1 draw with Man City. I would also love in the Christmas episode to get a victory just to continue some of our momentum and keep up pace. There's teams like Leicester, Stoke, Crystal Palace who are right on our tails uh, in terms of points. So even dropping one or two points here or there, it, it adds up very, very quickly. And I'd rather be ahead of them than behind them going through what is essentially a really busy January period. We also have uh, FA Cup ties to come. Um, and of course, I've jinxed it. I'm not, uh, I'm not happy that Jermaine Defoe's injured, but I, I'm at least happy that Callum Wilson can come on and it's not Callum Wilson carrying the injury and Jermaine Defoe coming on for him. Assertively, let's say I have faith in you, get out there and make a difference. He doesn't really care, which is fine. He's got roughly 83 minutes up top with Ashley Barnes. They know each other quite well. The partnership is blossoming superbly. 
Let's see if that change does anything for the highlights thus far, of which we've seen none. We're in the blue kit as well. If I forget halfway through which team we are, uh, forgive me. I'm a little bit colorblind. And red and green are the killers for me. Burnley in their traditional kit. We have gotten outside the first 20 minutes without conceding a goal, which I think if we think back to the first time we played them, we were already 4-0 down by this stage. So progress, we're getting better, we're improving. But it hasn't been the best match to record content to because there is fuck all happening. Chris Wood now has also picked up an injury. It's not a day for the strikers, but he is a pain in the ass. Jonathan Walters comes on. I wonder if that's going to change their structure a little bit going from that target man to having more of kind of a hardworking running player. They do have the ball now. It's cleaned up by... Oh, it's a decent ball in from Gosling to Pew. Can he hang a ball up here? Finds Barnes back post and Barnes has hit the post and it's gone out for a goal kick. Just had to get that one on target. The keeper was nowhere near it. Heaton with the ball forward now. Mings is on his own. If, and he wins the header forward. Gosling comes to the ball. Hendricks knocks it in behind for Wells. Wells finds Walters, who's come off the bench, and thankfully he screws that one wide as well. Danger. Definitely danger to be had. The game sprung to life after 30 minutes. Three shots to them, two to us. They are at home, so you would expect them to come back in both shades and chances. Shades. Uh, possession and chances created. All the way back to Heaton now. It's also interesting to see a battle of two flat 4-4-2s as well. Uh, with all the formations available, two teams and players. Oh, Narky Wells has gotten in behind. It's a well-weighted ball from John Walters. Maybe we were dealing with Chris Wood really well, and now that we've got two runners up front, they're doing a little bit better. But for the second game in a row, we go behind. It's just a long ball forward from Heaton, and Hendrick is able to bring it down and turn. So that midfield pressure from Sermon isn't good enough. And it's a well-weighted pass, to be fair. And Narky Wells just bars it down the middle. Can't ask too much more of Jack Butlin than that. But at least it gives me a chance to fire a bit of a rocket at halftime. Wilson's come off the bench and isn't having a great game. Andrew Sermon at least looks motivated. Tyrone Mings is struggling. Gibson and Cook are struggling, obviously, because the goal was straight down the middle. It's Mings now with the throw-in on the left-hand side. He's brought the ball back into possession. Goes all the way back to Butlin, who just hooks it clear towards Pugh. Thankfully, Sermon tidies up. Barnes now with the ball. He's got a runner outside left if he can find him. No, Wilson tries the strike from about 18 yards. And even though it was a highlight, it never really looked like testing Tom Heaton in the Burnley goal. We're going to get another highlight here before half time. 44th minute now. Mings comes forward to Gosling. We have had a bit of it, which is great. Pugh with the ball now. Looks for Wilson. He's got runners. Can he find him? Hangs the ball up. It's well away by Taylor. And now Walters is coming forward. Is Burnley going to find a counter-attack here? No, they've played a ball forward, and Gibson's going to tidy up. Forward to Mings. The highlight continues. Sermon with the ball now from deep towards Pew. Long has come through and won it. Cork now to Long again to Goodmanson. Ball forward. Gibson with a decent header, but it's only as far as Wells. Wells looks for Taylor at fullback. It's a good win back there from Simon Francis, who's back in the side. Long ball forward here. Wilson's on his own. Can he find the finish? He does. I'm not sure quite what happened with their defensive line there. Maybe it was a lack of communication between Tom Heaton and I think James Tarkowski. Let's check it out in three dimensions. Ah, oh, but with a ball forward here. Finds Barnes, who just really hangs one up in behind. And it looks like everybody stops in the Burnley back line. And Wilson is just going to stroll through and put that one in the back of the net. So we have found an equaliser just before half time. Decent time to score. But it does make me think, what do I do now for my halftime team talk? I was going to unleash the hairdryer on them, or the Christmas hairdryer. And just like that, we are in halftime, stats at halftime, really even. Four shots apiece, two on target each. We're leading the foul count and the yellow card count, and we've just had a little bit more of the ball. I would say we've probably had level amounts of highlights with them. Passionate, we are burnley after what happened in our last match. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And let's tell our defence, you weren't that bad, but you can still improve. And a few of them have gained confidence and looked motivated, which is good. They're all sitting on 6.6s, which isn't what we need. If they can give us a good platform and a decent base to go forward here and push on a little bit in the second half, we'll give it 15 more minutes before we introduce any subs. We might try and bring Jack Grealish on, see how he responds to losing his position in the starting lineup. Walters with the ball now. Back to Hendrick, to Arfield, to Wells. It's decent triangles. Mings goes back to Butland, and Butland hooks the ball clear, but he was getting closed down very quickly. Pugh with a poor touch. Walters again. This highlight just will not stop. Arfield with the ball. It's one back. Do we have anything on the counter here? Gosling with the ball now. He's got Mings out on the left-hand side. Can he release Pugh? He does. He's not going to get to the ball first. Tarkowski's won it back. Wilson closed down Heaton, and he hooks it forward. This is a never-ending highlight. I feel like it's been going for 10 minutes. Walters with the ball now. He's in the 18-yard box, and he has found a near-post finish. 
I thought he was going to hang a cross up because Narky Wells was lurking at back post, but Jack Button's been fantastic. I'm not going to shit on Jack Button for it, but let's check it out here in 3D and see how it looks. It's decent play from him and good link ups there. Walters just walks into the 18 yard box and strikes and I don't blame Jack Butland. I may have a couple of different things that I would say to Football Manager and Sports Interactive if they were in the room, but Jack Butland, he gets away with it. We've got a highlight immediately. Can we pull one back? Gosling with the ball now. Finds Pugh. Back to Gosling again. Forward to Wilson. Wilson finds Barnes. Can he, oh, he gets a strike away against his former team, but Tom Heaton comes out and claims well. This result would see us drop down to ninth position. A loss isn't great. Burnley would actually go above us on goal difference. All right, same as the Burnley match. Let's actually hit pause here so that nothing happens in the game behind us. I've been burnt by that one before. Central midfield's having a good game. I have faith in Gibson and Cook. I can't do too much, to be completely honest. So I'm going to look at changes in these sort of areas. So what we might do is bring on Stanislas on the right and Grealish on the left and make those our two attacking subs. And then if we get an equaliser, we'll look at maybe tidying up some of this defensive line stuff here, bring on maybe Daniels for Mings, uh, or bring Francis in the middle and bring Smith on the right-hand side. Let's give a team talk, though. Let's passionately say, I have faith in you. Get out there and make a difference. Jack Grealish has at least responded in a happy manner. They've both got decent morale, which is good. Stanislas in particular, he's just been a rotation player, playing bits and pieces here or there. Again, I've forgotten to hit play. Maybe that's why I don't usually hit pause when I make substitutions. But can the two subs off the... Oh, I forgot. Jermaine Defoe came off at the start. And Callum Wilson came on. So I've used all three subs before an hour's gone. Which usually means we're about to get a red card or an injury. If we do, we'll know that the game is somewhat fixed and also that I'm an idiot. Okay, so not as many highlights in the second half, but that is how the game itself started as well. So we might be in store for a chaotic last 15 minutes. Jonathan Walters after coming off the bench on an 8.1, same as the City game. These early subs are coming into games and changing them completely. Fabian Delph had a phenomenal performance against us as well. Francis finds Sermon now, gets the ball into Barnes, and Barnes, it's from nothing. I can't tell if it was a cross and it's just snuck its way in, but that is a fantastic finish from the big man. And I actually think that takes him to be our leading scorer for this season. Francis here finds Sermon. Sermon just with a little reverse left footed ball, and Barnes, I I'm going to give him the credit and say it was a shot. Yeah, I'm going to give Barnes a credit with that one and say that he meant it. His animation looked like he was striking the ball, but Heaton's gone straight back in for another highlight here. We're into the last 10 minutes. Westwood's come off the bench. Stanislas cuts it out. Barnes again. He's got runners. If he can find them, Ream cleans up well for them. Walters flicks the ball on and Mings should recover. Finds Sermon to Gosling. Forward towards Wilson, who doesn't look like he's on his toes at all in this match. Walters now is in behind. He's got runners in the middle. Thankfully, it's a ball over the top. Oh, and is it, we've gotten it away. We scrambled it, though. Taylor with the ball back across. Goodmanson, I think, hit either the base of the post or it was a phenomenal save from Jack Butland. We're into the last 10 minutes now. Should I use another shout and say, should I praise them? I don't know if that's going to work. Um, looks like they pushed Taylor forward to left midfield and Mees come on, who was phenomenal against us against Ashley Barnes the first time we played. I mean, I shouldn't be upset. It's two matches and two come from behind equalizers, but I would love a win. That's all I want for Christmas. Butler now with a long ball forward. Long with the ball forward now. Finds Hendrick in the middle. There are three minutes of extra time remaining, so they do have time. Francis with the header away. Is anyone going to come to the ball? Westwood tidies up unchallenged. Finds Taylor. Taylor with a strike from distance, and Butland has caught the ball. Is that the end of the highlight, or are we going to see something here now of recovered possession? It's a ball long forward to Barnes. It's headed back. Sermon tidies up. Finds Godsling. Godsling to Grealish. Can our signing from Aston Villa do anything? Stanislas forward into the box. Squares the ball up. Finds Wilson, and all he had to do was get that one on target. Heaton was scrambling back across his goal line. Doesn't quite get there. There's a minute remaining, though, and we're in possession. Grealish now plays forward to Wilson. Wilson to Barnes. He's got Stanislas on the far side. Instead, he comes back inside to Gosling. Barnes again. Out to Francis on the right. Walters with a decent tackle, and the counter attack is on. We're into the last minute of extra time now. Cook with the ball. It's a crossfield switch when he shouldn't have done it. Gibson, thankfully, tidies up. Ball forward towards Barnes. Long gets there first. Goodmanson now. Wells. Oh, and thankfully, Butland has come out and claimed the ball very well. Panic stations. Burnley are something of a bogey team for us. 
Sermon now with the ball out towards Stanislas. There's a ball over the top on here. Gibson with a phenomenal header. He's been excellent in this game. And he's tidying up here again and playing a ball out to Stanislas. And the referee has called full time. That was a really long final highlight. End to end, both teams had chances to win the game. 11 shots to Burnley, 10 to us, 5 on target apiece, 12 to 7, fair count. We had one yellow card and just shaded possession, 51%. That is actually a note we should probably make. The only board request we have in regards to our playing style is retain possession. So maybe once we get through January, we put that retain possession instruction on and try and keep them on board or keep them on side. I'm not going to shit on anybody. I'm going to calmly say or assertively say, what's the one that's like, what a comeback? Calmly say, you're unlucky today. And everyone seems pretty motivated, which is good. We've still got some big games. With this many games coming thick and fast, we can't really be upsetting anybody because there's always a match two days away and I'd rather just keep morale going, keep it up. It does see us drop down to eighth position, so we have finished this episode further behind than where we started. Across our 20 games, we've had nine wins, four draws, and seven defeats. But I shouldn't be too upset. It's two come from behind victories. Very easily could have been two losses, and we t still take a little bit of momentum. And it's now we now haven't lost in eight games. Uh, no, I take that back. We now haven't lost in six games, and we've only had one defeat in our last ten. So we're at least we're at least matching teams when we play them. On is even at Turf Moor, a 2-2 draw. Uh, experienced wing and Jonathan Walters put Burnley back in front and thankfully Ashley Barnes with a pretty fantastic equaliser the more I think about it on 78th minute against his old team. Let's go and have a look at when we might come back for a future episode. I think perhaps because it's January and because I'm going to try and do a couple of different things we'll come back for the end of that transfer window so we might play the West Brom game because I don't think we watched them last time and Leicester at both of them are at home. I know we've done a lot of home matches but uh, I think it's important that we get the end of that January transfer window in there in case there are any last minute people that we're trying to bring in and there's also some people that will be going out as well. But a decent episode. Merry Christmas to everybody in game. Uh, happy holidays to anybody else that happens to be watching it over the Christmas period. More than anything though, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the views and the consistent feedback we're getting across Twitter and in comment sections and all that sort of stuff. We have a fancy new intro. I don't know what cherry related song I've picked for the outro on this one, but hopefully it's a banger and you guys are enjoying it. Super exciting content that's going to be coming out over the next couple of weeks regarding Football Manager 2019 and some of the stuff that we're going to be doing with that game. Subscribe if you want to be kept up to date to when future videos come out on the channel, or you can follow in the Mixer FM and on Twitter. There will be a link in the description below. But as always, I've been Sean, and I will see you in the Mixer.